of competition in all aspects of our society has ingrained this ongoing subconscious narrative that we have to rank ourselves externally. We have to have these awards, we have to have these titles, we have to have X, Y, and Z experiences in order to be valid, and that's just not the case. So, uh, we're going to go through, I'm going to give you five tips on how to manifest the art or the performance opportunity, whether it's in public or just in private, and you want to have a good freestyle for one fucking time in your life. <laughs> Do you want to travel a country like me? I got the formula for you. So, here we go. <laughs> Alright, five steps. Here we go. Step one, get an education to pay your dues. You think this is obvious, but apparently it's not. So I'm gonna <laughs> Or I'm somewhere and I have like a disposable cup, 
I'll write whatever word I need to keep in mind to like get me through the day, whatever my struggle is. If you're at home and you're using like a reusable cup, I have little square like coasters that like I just steal from the bar, you know those paper ones that normally you just kind of peel apart and you just throw them the <laughs> bar center. You take those home, you just like write a little sharpie on them, a little piece of cardboard, anything. And every time you take a sip, when you put it down, the word's there. So even if you're not mentally every single time being like, I am worthy and deserving of love. I am worthy and deserving of love. Mm -hmm. It's not that, it's just like subconsciously you're seeing this and you're surrounding yourself with it and therefore, just like if I say yellow beetle, you're gonna all of a sudden see 12 yellow beetles in the next day. Same, <laughs> same exact concept. Second one, write it, read it, tell me to achieve it. <laughs> it's similar, but it's a little bit more long term than just your cup of coffee. So, for example, I do this for large things in my life. I'm trying to move to San Francisco, get into the tech industry. I'm trying to manifest a brand new life for me and like level up my performance. So steps in between. I need to network a little bit more and meet the right people to get the jobs that I want. So I write it down specifically, like a journal entry. You never have to read it again necessarily. Tuck it in your pocket. That, and, and every time you grab the change in your pocket or you're grabbing your phone and it falls out, oh, wait, I have goals. If you have goals, like I'm just not an aimless person just trying to like not die today, right? Like, oh, that's good enough. I mean, that is a good thing alone, but if you're striving to achieve a little bit more than not dying, having that physical representation with you throughout the day, it's shocking how of all of the therapies I've been through, these two things have turned me into a professional. <laughs> so, yes, um, lastly, don't say I will achieve this. You already are in the state of who, like, like I said, you have everything inside of you that you need to, to do the thing that you want to do, right? So you already are love, you already are successful, you already are satisfied. I am going to, like I am in the process of getting this job. Not, I want this job, it'd be kind of nice if I got this job, I really want to perform in that festival, it'd be kind of nice. No, like, at some point, like, it is already, you are already in the process of it happening. So, there's a million other things like this, especially if you don't like writing, or you're just like, this is too woo shit for me. <laughs> like, there are plenty of other very successful things on YouTube, like, they, there are so many, like, I know manifesting destiny and all that is kind of like a charged weird concept right now, but I promise you there's some really easy ones that exist out there. These two just pers personally work the best for me. Gratitude is the key to abundance. And I'm saying this is how you literally get rich. Literally, abundance equals money, but also satisfaction, right? So, the more you say please and thank you, and verbally extend your appreciation for every connection you make or opportunity you accept, the more that'll come back around. And even if, especially as Midwesterners, right, we're kind of shy, we feel bad for taking up space, but if you just take a second, go to a producer if you're in a show or anything, you're just like, hi, thank you, thank you so much, this is amazing, and you run. Or you write them a little letter, just a little token of appreciation, a little Facebook message, Every time you do this, you are a step up in their mind, and then you're the first, one of the first people, when they're like, oh, I have a new show, I have a new idea, I'd like to collaborate with this person because they're not a piece of shit, and they won't take me for granted, <laughs> and it goes along the way. So, what I kind of made my brand all about was writing love letters. So, oftentimes, I, I write kind of generically, just like, you're beautiful, I love you, you are worthy of everything you need. And I'll like hand them out during my performances because you have to also, besides the producers, you want, you need fans, you need an audience, you need people to love, you need people to experience the art with you. So, again, volunteer your time. I'm just going to keep saying that over and over again. Um, and then offering free content to your audience. This is kind of one of those things where it's like, well, you know, for example, my Instagram posts, I post a lot of content, a lot of free stuff that other people maybe are selling on Patreon or paying or like only selling in their private classes. Free content is the social proof that you know kind of what you're doing, right? It's the it's the content that makes people invested in you as a person and they become your friend, they become your colleague. 
the end of the day, we're all people. We're not just places to pick pockets from. But ironically, by just accepting that, they're going to throw your money, their money at you. <laughs> at the end of the day, though, it's not about the money. So my field, I, my other life, my mother life, I'm a mathematician, I could be making a hell of a load of money, right? But, going back to satisfaction, the best way to find like a hobby or um, a thing that you want to do, especially if you want to perform, you want to satisfy people, even on your lowest days. If you're having one of those days where you're performing and you're just like, man, I had a really crappy day, like, I'm not really feeling this, but then you remember your audience, and you remember that you love these people and you just want to make the world a better place and you just want to inspire people to just live their lives, all of a sudden, your little sim stats go all the way up and you're happy and you're excited and you're ready to get back on stage. The moment you keep that in, you forget about that, game over. Be extraordinarily flexible. So, Einstein took a thousand attempts to make a label. So, if I send a thousand emails out and I get a bunch of rejections, that's to be expected. Because not everyone is going to be on that same level or looking for what you want. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not worthy or you're not a good artist. It just means it's not the right fit and that's fine. So, you will fail. You will face rejection. Learn and grow. You will have your heart broken. Feel the pain. Use it as a fertilizer. Your life will immediately fall apart many times in life, and it'll do it all the time, and you'll have to reroute, and this is to ironically be expected. So don't let this harden you. Don't let this feel like it is the end. It's more of a question that you really need to look internally. Um, it's, just, it's just part of the process. Like, making art, <clears throat> making shows, it's, you're naturally going to be going through all of your emotions, which is why I recommend therapy in the beginning of this. <laughs> if you don't have a strong mind and a strong heart, it might be difficult to get through this. But I say these things because, again, facing getting those rejection emails in festivals or you, know, you didn't win your medal, or you couldn't even get to the stage. I had to drop out of the competition this weekend because my life falls under category C here. <laughs> so, uh, it's not the end of the road. I mean, there's still, what that does is it makes space for other opportunities. For example, now I'm performing the Burlesque Hall of Fame in the next couple weekends, Woo! and now I have the time and the mental Woo! and the emotional energy to get there. <laughs> so when life falls apart and you have to quit some shit, other things, the things that are meant to be, for lack of better phrasing, will fall into place. Again, as long as you keep up that positivity, you're not just going to go on Facebook and be like, this stupid ass festival, they didn't make sense. Be flexible. And turn your message into your message. That's what my meditation guru tells me all the time. And I come in and I cry. And she's like, no, this is good. This is part of your message. Own it. And that's why I'm here right now. So here's specifically for performing professionally. And this is where it might actually uh, get kind of bitchy, but I'm cool with it. <laughs> so you can't quote a twinkle, but you sure can describe it. So what does that mean? So you have to have the gusto to show people what you are and what you are bringing to the table. So you have to get comfortable talking about yourself in as many mediums as possible. Uh, in the Midwest, that's hard. Uh, bragging or talking about yourself in a positive way tends to make people feel, I don't know, personally attacked for some reason. And it's weird. And it's something that I had to shed in order to be able to be like, actually, yes, these are all the things that I do, that long list of things. I'm not going to not say them just because that's not who I am, because those are the things that I get booked for. Um, and you won't get booked for them if you don't put it out there. If you don't say, I'm a burlesque dancer, I'm a model, I do these things, no one's going to know that your services are available to be booked. So, invest in learning communication skills, because this will, you will be your number one advocate. No one is ever going to randomly come across your YouTube page and discover you, <laughs> and then you'll all be like, live in the dream. I tried it. I tried it all. It doesn't do anything. Although I'm really popular in India with all of the men over 47. <laughs> so shout out to you guys. <laughs> so seriously, I've taken a lot of 
of copy classes, like social media marketing classes, not even like at universities and shit, like things don't have to be accredited to be of value. There's a lot of online courses I've taken. Um, B School by Marie Forleo and her, she has a program called Copy Cure. That's what helps me be the writer that I am today, which is why I have uh, like the thing that I put a lot of my art into. Okay, if you want to be viewed as a professional, present yourself as one. That's where we're going to get a little spicy. So, again, the negative shit, don't put it online. If you're having a bad day, talk to a therapist about it. Talk to your, you know, family. Make yourself some tea. Don't put that shit on the internet unless it is part of your art and, it, and you thought it through and you know that it is relevant to the message that you are consistently selling. So, being an artist is a valu valuable and valid job just like anything else. Don't degrade yourself or your art form and your peers by acting in ways that contradict what you're trying to sell. Exactly what I said, but also the way I dress today. I'm not going to come in here and not even have brush my teeth, you know, just I just walk in and I don't care because I'm a flower. <laughs> so, I'm going to smell a little weird and... No, I'm still a professional. I'm still here trying to give you guys tools and move forward, right? So, present yourself as such. Make a damn website. <laughs> Make a fucking website. <laughs> oh. It's really easy as well. So I just did a cross-country tour, and I got booked. I was shocked. Like the, I got booked in San Francisco. My wildest dreams got to perform in the best shows that I've ever seen in the country. I got to like close out and headline these shows. And why was that? Oh, because my email signature says Marina Mars, traveling showgirl, Las Vegas, Nevada. Phone number www.marinamarsmotherfucking.com So, it answers all the questions that they might already have, whereas if you're just like, yeah, I'd like to do this shit, XO, Mara, Marina, like, that's not going to get you booked. Websites that make you look professional, as well as business cards. For example, the other day, <laughs> the other day, I, again, I live in Las Vegas. I don't perform here much anymore every once in a while, but I'm mostly West-based. And I was in Woodman's in Wisconsin buying some spotted cow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So excited. And so this guy looks at my ID and he goes, oh, you're in Las Vegas. That's super cool. Like, I'm going to be there with eight of my friends for a bachelor party. And I was like, oh, I have a treat for you. So I grabbed my purse, I grabbed my little business. Card and I was like, when you're in town, come to MarinaMars.com, there's a calendar, all the links to every single show, whether it's just walk-in, like, cash cover, or the link to, if there's like a pre-sale, you know how many people I've had come in off the streets randomly and I leave my business cards everywhere, they go to my website, they come to the shows, oh, and now, like, because they are, they look so excited, they come see me after the show, they talk to me, my producer sees that, so they see that I bring in the money, they book me more, they give me the headliner spots, I make a fuckload of money. Done. So just fucking do it. <laughs> and if you need help, I can do that service for you. <laughs> Alright, competition is not as great as compassion for your purpose. So, again, yeah, it's going to get all hippie for a, shit for a second, but your conduit for the special message that you have to share. What does this mean? So, I have this persona that is ridiculous and extravagant. That's the whole point of a persona. But me as a person, as a little tiny person, I'm like this all the time. I love you and I'm just, I don't want to offend you and I just, I just really want to live in a really happy world and blah, blah, blah. But in order to achieve that, I gotta be a, I gotta be Marina Mars, operating up here. Um, that being said, this isn't my ego, this is an act. This isn't real. This is not what I actually look like when I get out of bed, despite Beyonce's song, right? <laughs> um, I just know that 
at the end of the day, even if I'm not a headliner, I'm not winning awards, it doesn't matter because when I hand that love, love letter up or my, my story or my act resonated with someone and they tell me, you know, something changed their life. For example, I had a, a student for a while who, she got pregnant, had a baby, hadn't seen her. It had been almost two years. And she finally came back and I was like, whoa, what happened? She's like, well, postpartum was super bad to the point where I couldn't do anything. Um, my therapist actually told me to come back to pole and she actually specifically took my burlesque class and uh, I just had this silly little exercise where instead of picking a fancy little part of your body, pick something a little bit more scoochy scoochy a little bit, just just like not as cool, like you know elbows aren't the coolest thing, but you can make it cool, that's the point of burlesque, right? So um, it was just a pick a body part, show it, do something silly and run to the other side of the classroom, but by yourself. And she lifted her tummy for a second and went <laughs> And after class she was crying and she was like, I was like, girl, what's up? Like, did I hurt feelings? I'm so sorry. She's like, no, uh, my almost son hasn't seen my belly since I gave birth. Um, that's why I do what I do. It's not like this pomp, this is an act. This parent costs too much money to do otherwise. This, the, these shoes, like, they hurt. I don't like wearing them that much. Thank you. <laughs> Because this world, this, you're going to get a lot of bullshit, you're going to get a lot of haters, you're going to get a lot of people who talk shit about you being an artist, and they don't matter. So, tell people how you will help them rather than who you are. Um, this is the way I write all my copy on my website, and like in my Instagram, my intros when I'm in introducing very specific acts that have a message. Um, because if you wanted to know who I was, you could just Google me. I actually show up right away on the top because I pay for that. <laughs> um, yeah, hit the fucking website. But um, people don't give a shit like who you are if they don't know you, but they do care how you could potentially help them. So even if you're telling your own story, that's fine, but just make sure you remember that you are sharing something in order to make the world a little bit better or add production value. You know, when I, again, back when I went to San Francisco, I, I did a lot of research on every single show I applied for, and I gave a little blurb, maybe two to three sentences, and I was like, hey, hey I know that this is the vision for your show, here's how I fit into that vision. Um, I'm also flexible, point number five, and moldable if you need something specifically or you're looking for an act, or someone just dropped out that wanted to be, I don't know, a little mermaid, you need a little mermaid, I'll go be your little fucking mermaid. Like, I will find a way to help you rather than be like, you should have me in your show because I'm great, I'm cute, I have these awards, I am perfect, la 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 la. Like, no one cares. No one cares. No one cares. People care about your attitude. So, again, I have to keep reiterating this. Focus on helping your audience instead of yourself. And I think the next point really illustrates that. Yes, this is where it gets a little controversial. And I stand by my opinions. <laughs> this is not a high school talent show for your friends to stand around and give you golf claps. If you legitimately want to have put your art form onto the stage rather than just a student showcase, student co showcases literally are meant to like, yay, like do what you want. But what I'm saying is if you're getting paid to perform out in the world, this isn't about feeding your ego. Because I'm telling you that's very short-lived and will not last very long. So let's just recap. We'll just put it all together really quick. Oh, why did I put these on so many transitions? All right. <laughs> Get an education. Pay your dues. Don't be a piece of shit. Success <laughs> okay, is an awful barometer. Focus on satisfaction. If you need help in that area. Please see a therapist. And meditate. That works for me too. Stop hustling and start aligning. Put it in your mind exactly what you want to do before you do it. That way, it's that identity aspect won't be challenged. You'll be able to just be a sponge for that information and those opportunities. Gratitude is the key to abundance. Say please and thank you over and over and over again. And never forget where you came from. Be flexible. Oh, nope, just kidding. No, yeah, I already said that. Be flexible. Shit's going to happen. Opportunities are going to fall apart. And in that chaos is where the phoenix rises and all the cool shit happens. And to do the other stuff, 
la, la, la. You have to have good communication skills. If you don't, if your writing is sloppy, if you can't spell things, if you don't know the difference between it's and it's or they, 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 all that, double check yourself. Go learn those things. Learn how to write in a way that will help you, help you get booked, make you look professional in an email, even Facebook too. Uh, if you want to be viewed as a professional, present yourself as one, whether it's in your writing, in your copy, the way you dress, the way you talk. Like I said, Rhea Mars, this is a persona. This ain't me all the time, she can tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very different creature outside of this because I'm not always working, but I'm working right now. And lastly, competition's great, it has its place, but when it comes to fueling your art, just remember what your purpose is and have compassion for that purpose even if it is a rocky road, because that is what will keep you prolific. Competitions. Guess what? If you won a medal last year, you're no longer the winner, because the winners are happening this weekend, right? You <laughs> give up your title because the next year replaces you. And that will always be the case. Talk to any burlesque legend in Las Vegas. They'll tell you. You just buy them a drink, and they'll be like, these, these fucking people, they don't get it. <laughs> I say to competition, you got to love. You just got to love. <laughs> so, um, this was a lot, and I understand that some things might take a moment. I'm always available, I'm always responding to everyone in my DMs and in my email. Again, oh, you can't even see it, but marinemars.com. Oh, sorry. <laughs> very much more on Instagram than Facebook, but hit me up if you have any questions about anything. If it is more specific to do with like getting booked around the country, how to book tours, like all the stuff that has to do with performing professionally, let me know. I love helping people because people helped me. So, I love you guys. Thank you.